Hey guys, so today's video is going to be something a little bit different here on my channel. If you're new here, most of my videos are about makeup and beauty, but today we're talking about apartments in Seattle because me and my boyfriend and our three cats are getting ready to move to Seattle at the end of June. I recently went apartment hunting there and little known fact about me, one of my favorite types of videos to watch on YouTube is apartment hunting videos. I just love seeing what's out there, what's available at different price points in different cities. And today I'm gonna to be showing you three examples of apartments that you can get in Seattle for $1,500 a month or less, which is definitely a pretty tight budget in Seattle. If you're willing to get something even smaller, like a studio, you can save even more money. Or if you're willing to have roommates, of course, in you know a two or three bedroom place, you can also find something more affordable that way. But you can absolutely find a one bedroom apartment for under that $1,500 a month price point. That was our budget. And we're specifically looking at one bedroom apartments. And these are actually three apartments that we considered but none of these are the one that we actually ended up getting. So um, I actually, funny story, I haven't even toured the one that we're getting, but that's because it's a building that I lived in in the past. So we're moving in sight unseen, but I'm already familiar with the building, so it's fine. But I don't recommend doing that. I definitely recommend going and touring apartments before you decide which one to rent. But I wanted to just show what you can get and just to give a little bit of background on what we were looking for. So like I said, our budget was under 1600 but ideally under 1500 a month. Square footage wise, we were hoping for something, ideally something around 700 square feet, but we're, we were willing to go as low as like 500, 550 around there. We wanted laundry in the building, didn't have to be in unit. Of course, in unit would be great, but as long as there's a laundry room in the building, we were fine with that. Other than that, we're really not too picky. Some nice to haves were obviously like a dishwasher, a balcony, and then we were also really hoping to find something that was not on the ground floor and also a building that was secure entry where you have to be buzzed in. I was really hoping not to get a building where you enter the unit from the outside just for safety reasons. And then of course, location. We did have a few neighborhoods that were kind of on our top favorites list. We definitely didn't want to live super close to downtown. I also really don't like Cap Hill. I wouldn't want to live in Capitol Hill. Although it's fun to hang out there, I just, it's too nightlifey for me. I prefer something a little bit more residential. Another neighborhood that was completely out of the question was U District, just because that's the university district. That's where most students live. So it's not really a place you'd want to live unless you're a student. But other than that, we weren't super picky about neighborhoods. I'm not going to be sharing the exact neighborhood that we ended up in, but I will let you know the neighborhoods that these three apartments are in just for another bit of context. But we were looking specifically within Seattle city limits. We didn't really want to live in a suburb or anything. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the three apartments. So apartment number one, this was by far the smallest of the three. It was 547 square feet and the price was $13.95 a month. So great price point. By the way, I don't think any of these are still available. This was like several weeks ago. The rental market in Seattle is very fast. So yeah, quick disclaimer there. I'm not advertising these apartments. I just wanted to show some examples of what we saw. So this one was in the Licton Springs neighborhood, which is a very small neighborhood. It's also kind of just between Green Lake and Northgate. So North Green Lake would be another good way to describe this location. It was within like a 20 minute walk to Green Lake. So that's really nice, um, but it's not really close to any kind of hustle and bustle. It was a very quiet residential street, but this one had a lot of nice perks, even though it was the smallest. It was a top floor unit and it did have a balcony with a really nice view. I mean, it wasn't like the most exciting view ever, but you get a nice look at, you know, trees and other houses. The kitchen was very basic, but it had everything. It actually had an in-unit washer and dryer, which is a rare find, especially at this price point. Um, as well as a dishwasher and a garbage disposal. So all the all the appliances, a full-size fridge, and a very, very small, like what you might call an eating nook. You could put a very small two-person table right there if you wanted to. I was also thinking, like for us at least, we don't necessarily feel like we need to have a kitchen table because we sit at our couch to eat a lot of the time, and we could also have a little table out on the balcony. So we would probably have used this space for maybe like a small desk, maybe even a cat tree could go there. <laughs> The living room area definitely did feel small, especially for two people and three cats. It would be kind of a tight squeeze for us. We could have made this work. There was definitely room for, you know, a small couch and a TV entertainment center in this living room. There was also a closet in the living room. So that's pretty much the whole living area. Then getting into the hallway, you'll see there's a really big built-in storage unit along one of the walls with just a bunch of cabinets. 
I like that there was a lot of storage space here, even though it's a pretty small place. And then to the left, there was a bathroom, which had a full tub, a pretty decent sized countertop area with some pretty good storage. It also had a medicine cabinet. So really good storage in this apartment, even though, you know, it's not the most updated, modern looking place. Very functional, seemed very usable. And then finally getting into the bedroom. The bedroom was a decent size, definitely big enough for a queen size bed, I would say. You could maybe fit a king size bed in here, but it would probably take up like a lot of space. Um, but yeah, I mean, a good size bedroom, nice window so you get some decent natural light in here, and then a pretty basic closet. Not a walk-in closet, but pretty standard closet for Seattle. That's pretty much the entire apartment number one. Another really nice thing about this one was that it had a covered parking space included in the rent, which is another very rare find. Most of the time in an apartment at this price point, you're probably going to have to pay extra for a garage spot or you're just gonna have to rely on street parking, which in this area, street parking would have been totally fine as well, but the fact that there was a free covered parking spot included in the rent was a really nice bonus, plus the in-unit washer and dryer. So this was, a, this was a great place. I think it's a little small, again, for a couple with three cats, but I could see this working great for um, a couple if you have no pets or if you're just a single person, maybe you have a cat or two, I think it would work. So I really liked that one. It was a good price, not the most exciting location again, but not a bad location at all. So then apartment number two was actually in the same neighborhood as apartment number one. It was also in what they call Licton Springs. Okay, this apartment was absolutely stunning on the inside. I absolutely loved the interior of this one. This one, like I said, was in the same neighborhood, although I would say that the location of this one was slightly worse than apartment number one. It was in the same neighborhood, only a few blocks away from the previous one, but it was right off of Aurora Avenue, which if you're familiar with Seattle, Aurora is a really busy, basically main highway that goes all the way north and south through Seattle. Parts of it can be a tad sketchy, and I did feel a little bit, I have to say, I felt a little bit nervous about this location. Even though the building itself was very secure, it had like a front gate that you would have to be buzzed into and then another door that you would have to unlock to get into the building and then you enter your unit from the inside. So the location, not so good which is why I think the place is so, so nice looking for this price point. So this one was exactly 1500 a month, which this, let me just say, an apartment this nice in a more desirable location would probably be closer to 2K a month. Like it was, it was so nice. Oh man, like I was like, dang, like this place would look beautiful for filming. It had floor to ceiling windows. We'll get into all that, but this one was 1500 a month. Plus I did make a note of this because it is kind of unique. They also just do a flat fee of 200 a month for all of your utilities, and that includes internet, cable, electricity, all of that. So that's a pretty good deal. Usually most places will say you're on your own, you set up your own utilities, internet, all of that. So that seemed like a pretty good deal to me. This one was a little bit bigger than apartment number one. This one had 567 square feet, so it was really only 20 square feet bigger but it felt a lot bigger. I think just because the ceilings might've been a little bit higher, it was also just a little bit lighter and brighter and um, just more modern, so it just felt bigger to me. Anyway, getting started with the tour of this one, you will see an absolutely beautiful kitchen with stainless steel appliances, beautiful tile backsplash. I'm not sure if these were granite countertops, but they were like a solid black. They looked really nice. It had a glass top stove. All the appliances looked brand new. It even had a built-in microwave, which most places don't have. So I, yeah, I loved, I loved the kitchen. Nice big sink with a sink sprayer. <laughs> and if you guys watch Cash Jordan, he does New York City apartment tours and he always points out the sink sprayers. Um, we, we love him. But that was the kitchen. This also had a nice um, area next to the kitchen where you could definitely fit a good sized kitchen table. And you'll see these floor to ceiling windows. You can see though, the view is really nothing special outside these windows. And again, that kind of goes back to the location not being the greatest. And then also a nice big living room area. This, this one was a very open floor plan compared to the other one. The kitchen and living room were just one big space. Um, a lot more spacious than the previous apartment. And then getting into the hallway, we have the one bedroom, which was again, a really good size. You could definitely fit a queen size bed in here. It had two windows that just faced another building. So really, non-existent view, but that's okay. And then did have another closet similar size to the other one, um, just a small closet, but would definitely work for two people, I think. Then out in the hallway, you have a nice big 
hall closet where you could keep cleaning supplies, you could use it for linens, coats, whatever. Beautiful, very new looking washer and dryer in this unit as well. And then finally we had the bathroom, which was also very nice, very big. It didn't have a tub though, it only had a standing shower. Again, about the same amount of counter space and like drawer cabinet space as the apartment number one. Um, but much more modern looking. It also had a frosted glass window in the bathroom, which is really nice. I like having a little window in the bathroom just to bring some light in. So that was a nice touch. So that was the entire apartment number two. I thought this one was absolutely stunning, even though the location was not great. And then as far as parking, there was no parking included or there was no garage even. So you just have to do street parking, which it was pretty easy to find a place to park on the street. We actually did apply to this one and apartment number one, um, but we ended up going with a different one. We applied to three places and we ended up getting the one, like I said, in the building that I used to live in. That was also our first choice. And also I will probably show like a little apartment tour of our new place once we're settled in. Like I said, I didn't even tour this one on my trip, so I don't, I'm not able to show it to you in this video, but that is the one we ended up going with. But we did apply to those other two as backup. And the this one, this really pretty one, I think somebody else had applied before us, so we never heard back from them. So then apartment number three, this one we weren't really considering. This was kind of like a backup to our backup to our backup. Like it was kind of just there so that we had this option just in case we didn't get any of the three that we had applied to. This one was in the Bitter Lake neighborhood, which is very far north, not a bad neighborhood at all. It's just pretty far from everything. It's far from downtown, but it's a reasonable drive to downtown. Like you could probably get downtown in about 20 minutes with no traffic. So it's probably obvious, but you know, the further away from downtown you go, either north or south, the more like more affordable options you can find. But anyway, this one was 1500 a month or 1499 a month and it was the biggest one by far this one is 780 square feet which felt huge for a one bedroom that is big I mean I've seen two bedrooms that were 700 square feet so this was very spacious I just can't get over how massive this one was so you walk in the door and immediately you have a little coat closet there and then you have this extra I guess storage room the water heater was in here I guess this is just like a giant storage room I didn't know if maybe this at one point was supposed to be a laundry room, but there was no washer dryer hookup that I saw. So I'm not really sure what this space is meant for. There's no window or anything, so it's not really a room, but you could definitely use it to store things. We could put our litter boxes in here. But then the kitchen in this one was also really nice. Again, just a pretty standard galley style kitchen, but everything was very nice and updated and modern. You had nice white cabinets, nice stainless steel appliances. Again, a sink sprayer, which was nice, and a dishwasher. And then you get to the living room, which was huge. And then there was also a huge dining nook. You could use that as a little office space too if you didn't want to have a kitchen table there. I mean, this place was spacious. It also had a really nice balcony. The view wasn't anything noteworthy, just very residential, kind of overlooks the rest of the apartment complex. Then on the other side of this hallway, you get to the bedroom. So here you have another big closet in this hallway. Uh, I think you would probably use this for linens or just extra bathroom storage. And then the bathroom was pretty standard, just had a small sink and countertop area. No medicine cabinet in this one, not a lot of bathroom storage, but I think that the ample closet space out in the hallway makes up for it. And then this one also did have a full-size tub. And then finally we have the bedroom, which was also really, really spacious. Once again, you could absolutely fit a queen size bed in here. If not, you could probably squeeze a king bed in here. And then a big closet. The closet actually had two doors, but the entire thing is just one big long closet. So plenty of closet space for two people. I was just blown away by how much closet space this place had and just how big it was in general. So definitely don't disregard those farther north neighborhoods if you are looking for something that maybe has a little bit more space and more bang for your buck. If you're willing to live a little bit further away from the hustle and bustle, you can definitely find something bigger than like 500 square feet at this price point. Again, there was no washer and dryer in this unit, but there was a laundry room just down the hall with coin-operated washers and dryers, which is pretty normal in Seattle. 
I honestly don't mind as long as there's laundry in the building, I don't really care. And I also think even though it's kind of annoying to have to go down the hall to do your laundry and then pay, usually it's like $1.50 to $2 for a load of laundry. But by not having a washer and dryer in your unit, you're also saving probably quite a bit on utilities and both water and electricity to power the dryer. So I al almost wonder if having the in-building coin-operated unit might actually be cheaper in the long run for you than having it in your unit. I'm not sure. Does anybody know? I, I just just something I've wondered. This one also did have a garage. I'm not sure. You probably do have to pay for a garage spot, but there was also plenty of off-street parking. Like it had a pretty big parking lot. So parking seemed to be really easy. I don't think you would have to park out on the street. But those are the three units that I wanted to show you guys in this video. I know this is a very different video for my channel, but I had a lot of fun doing it. If you're new, welcome. If you're interested in subscribing, I'd love to have you. I post four videos a week. I'm getting ready to have a big moving to Seattle vlog series coming up. Up, so I would love to have you stick around but I would love to hear in the comments below which of these three apartments would you pick if you were choosing between just these three I would love to know thank you so much for watching today's video if you enjoyed it be sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you've not already and hopefully I will talk to you very soon in my next video bye